Our guest on Personally Speaking today is uh, Supreme Knight Patrick E. Kelly, who heads up the Knights of Columbus, and they have produced a powerful film about the life of Mother Teresa. Stay with us. Welcome to Personally Speaking. I'm your host, Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and Supreme Knight Patrick Kelly joins me now. Patrick E. Kelly is the 14th Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus, having taken office in March 1st of 2021. He serves as the Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of the Board of the world's largest Catholic fraternal organization with more than 2 million members internationally. Mr. Kelly served as Deputy Supreme Knight from 2011 until 2021, and previously he served as Vice President for Public Policy for 11 years. He also served as the first Executive Director of the St. John Paul II National Shrine in Washington, D.C., and prior to his leadership roles in the Knights, Mr. Kelly pursued a lengthy career of public service. He served in the United States Navy for 24 years and holds a master's degree in theology from the Catholic University of America, a law degree from Marquette University Law School, and a bachelor's degree in economics from Marquette University as well. The Knights of Columbus have produced a great and powerful new film called Mother Teresa, No Greater Love which will be in more than 900 theaters across the United States on Monday, October 3rd and Tuesday, October 4th, and available after that through streaming and DVD. The film chronicles the life of Mother Teresa and introduces her to a new generation of Catholics demonstrating the spiritual and physical impact Mother Teresa and the missionaries of charity have had and continue to have on Catholics and non-Catholics around the world. Supreme Knight Patrick Kelly is here with us today to tell us about this new feature-length documentary about Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta, as well as about the role of the Knights of Columbus. Joining me now, I'm honored and delighted to welcome to Personally Speaking, Supreme Knight Patrick E. Kelly. Supreme Knight Kelly is our guest. I'm delighted to have him on the program. Uh, I'd like to begin by asking a kind of background question. Uh, most of the folks in my own local council are folks who would be, uh, let's say, middle-aged and and I'm intrigued by the fact that you came into the Knights in 1983 when you had to be a really young guy. What was the force that made you say, I want to find out more about the Knights of Columbus? Well, you know what it was, Monsignor? Um, it, was, it was the other men, the other college students who I was friends with, and they were just really good good men. And I just, I just wanted to be with them. I wanted to have these bonds of, of faith together. And, and so I met these guys. They were wonderful guys. We all had our faith in common. And so for me, joining the Knights, you know, made sense. But it was really the, it was really the friendship that, that brought me into the Knights. Okay. And, and obviously that friendship continues now, many, many years later. Now, the Knights of Columbus have put together an amazing film on the life of Mother Teresa. And I want to talk about that. But I I'm troubled, as you probably are too, by the reality that many young people in my parish don't even know who she is or what she stood for. I'm reminded that the gospel this weekend talks about uh, the passage from, uh, begins with the passage from Amos saying, don't be complacent. And clearly Jesus in talking about Lazarus being ignored by the rich man is saying, don't be complacent. Is that her primary gift, that she saw a problem and addressed the problem? And in so many ways, it seems to me, that's precisely what the Knights of Columbus do all the time, and especially have done with producing a film, uh, No Greater Love, The Story of Mother Teresa. Tell us about the Knights in terms of what they do for others, and why you want now to reintroduce to many people who don't know her, the great saint Mother Teresa. Well, Monsignor, that's a great question, and there's so much in there. But yeah. but as you know, the Knights of Columbus, our first principle is charity, right? Mm -hmm. So we are in service to others, and we are in service to the family. So it makes sense in many ways that the Knights of Columbus would be entrusted with this, this mission to produce this film, which the missionaries asked us, the missionaries of charity asked us to produ produce this film, which is which is both an honor, but it's also a huge responsibility. <laughs> right, um, right. But but I really think I really think you know who who the knights are as a as an organization in service 
to others in service to the family, it really makes sense that we would produce this film um, in, in, in many ways, because Mother Teresa was really a, a, a beacon of selfless love. I mean, she her whole being was about serving others, serving the poorest of the poor. But one thing as Knights that we know, and I think as all Catholics we know is, you know, you don't have to go to Calcutta to serve the poor. I mean, and, mm. and, and there are many different ways of being poor. So even in our culture, in our workplaces, in our homes, there are people who are suffering from isolation and loneliness. And so we, you know, we need to be there for those people. I think that's one of the enduring messages about this film uh, mm. that everyone, no matter their station of life, can take away from this film. Supreme Knight Patrick Kelly's our guest. You know, you come to this job, this important job of uh, coordinating and directing the Knights of Columbus as a man of faith yourself. But I'm always intrigued by family of origin. What, when you look back, did your family, specifically your parents, do right in raising you to make you the man you are today? Uh, you know what they did? I, I think um, it's another great question, my senior. I think they were they were they persevered, right? So 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 they persevered till the end. I grew up in a, a large, you know, Catholic family, Irish Catholic family, and we went to mass every Sunday. But and faith was a part of how we grew up. I mean, we just, you know, it, faith was some, was not something extrinsic that was sort of you know forced upon us. It was just part of who we are. And we talked a lot about about our faith. We talked a lot about the church, uh, and it was those conversations were normal. It was just normal to have those conversations in our home. And, and I think that's what they did. And of course, their example too. I mean, my parents, they perse persevered through some very difficult times. I mean, one of my brother died, he was 18 and I was 15. It's very challenging for a family and particularly for a parents when a, when a child dies and they persevered through all of that. So it was a great example for us. Now, uh, for those who don't know, uh, the Supreme Knight also is uh, not just someone who's a great son and comes from a family of brothers and sisters, but he's also now in the wonderful vocation of being a dad. So have you figured out, or is there a way, so many parents, grandparents listen to or watch a show like this, and they, they love their faith, and they want to see their children and grandchildren embrace the faith. As someone who's gone through that himself and trying to plant good seed in the three daughters you've been blessed to have, is there a right or wrong way to try to see that the next generation can come to see the beauty of our faith? Yeah, uh, you know, again, I think it's example. And, and, and one of the things, too, that's very uh, important for the Knights is the, the example of faith that the Father sets mm -hmm. is the most important thing, okay? I'm not diminishing the role of the mother, right. but the, the, the biggest determining factor in whether a child remains in the faith as they become an adult yeah. is the practice of the Father. It's the example of seeing the Father, the man, practicing his faith and making it a part mm -hmm. of his life. And that's a crucial thing. Uh, that's a crucial thing for, for knights, but also for every Catholic man to, to be that example and pass that on to your children. Do you have any insight into why, though, uh, just last week we commissioned the catechists in our parish, Our Lady of Lords out here on Long Island, and I love all my catechists, but it troubled me that 90% of the catechists are women, great that they are, and, and you're right, we put a, a man, a guy in the classroom, we know it has a, a great power, a great authority. Um, why aren't guys more into the practice of their faith? Why aren't they more into uh, teaching the faith? What you say about the role of, of men, fathers, dads is, is absolutely on target. How do we get more guys to come in? Is it perhaps through the Knights of Columbus? You know, I, perhaps it is. I, yeah. I, think, I think every man should join the Knights of Columbus. Right, and you can, right. you can go to our website and do that. Um, I also think it's important for men to have friendships mm. that have faith in common, right? So it's, it's great talking about sports and talking about other things, but you need those friendships that are, that where you're really, you know, you're, 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 you're looking toward a horizon together you have the you have the greatest most important things in common which is mm -hmm. our our faith in Jesus Christ those friendships i could say this in my life those kinds of friendships 
made all the difference for me as I was as I was maturing and as I was sort of really embracing my faith. It was my friendships with other men that really pushed me along, if I could say that. Supreme Knight Patrick Kelly is our guest on Personally Speaking. When I taught seminary homiletics, one of the things I remember was that uh, so many good Catholic uh, deacons and priests-to-be were very nervous about dealing with contemporary issues, uh, matters of public policy. One of the great things about the Knights of Columbus is uh, you, you folks— you're unafraid. You you go into some pretty controversial issues. Obviously, the pro-life being one of them, but but it's not just the pro-life issue. There are any number of issues that that you address and are unafraid about presenting the Catholic point of view. Uh, do you lose people because of that, or do you find that people, in fact, want an organization like the Knights to be out there, out front, saying, "This is who we are. This is what we believe. We're in the public square," and not embarrassed to be there? Yeah. You know, um, we we do lose some people. But we also gain a lot of people. And, that, and that's the important thing, I think, to remember. As Supreme Knight, and I, I've been Supreme Knight for over a year now, I get a lot of letters. And uh, 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 I'll, I'll get some letters. People will leave the Knights for this reason or that reason, or we're, we're too pro-life. <laughs> um, but you always have to remember this. I mean, for, for every person that leaves because you're too pro-life, Mm -hmm. you're waking up a person who is joining precisely because you are pro-life. Yeah. But I would say this, the Knights, I mean, we, we, we take, we take, we're with the church. I mean, we're with the church, you know, and, and, and whether, so whether it's pro-life issues, assisted suicide, religious mm -hmm. liberty, we, we just, we, am, we're, we're Catholic and we make no bones about it. And that's a wonderful thing, and it's great. I, I want to talk about the two million members, if I can, for a second. People know, because they've heard so much about the Knights being an international organization, two million members. They talk about it as a fraternal group. But sometimes when they talk about the two million, there's so much focus on the wonderful men in the Knights of Columbus. I'm not sure, Grand Knight, the people know, Supreme Knight, I'm not so sure the people know that there's lots of room in the Knights of Columbus for women. Can you tell us a little bit about the role of women in the Knights of Columbus? Yeah, well, well everything we do... Uh... Uh, we're a family organization. So yes, we're an organization of, of men. Men are our members. But like in my family in, in particular, so I do a lot of things for the Knights of Columbus. My wife is with me all the time, and she's a tremendous help and sounding board to me. And so it would be a mistake to think of the Knights as, as just a men's club, because mm -hmm. that's not what we are. We are an organization of men, but we, we're at the service of the family and we serve with, you know, with our wives. And, uh, and so we're, we're really part of the church. And I don't think, I don't think, uh, I, I don't think anyone would really balk at that. I think an, anyone who knows the Knights understands that we are a family organization. Uh, so, so, but the, the, our, our, our wives and other, and, and women are just so important to what we do. We really couldn't do what we do without their support. Okay, we're going to go back to that woman we want to focus on, Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta. Um, one of the people who uh, is front and center in this great new film that you put together, No Greater Love, is Jim Wahlberg, of course, a brother to Donnie and to Mark Wahlberg. Can you tell us how Jim got involved and what specifically has he got to say in this movie? Well, Jim got involved in the movie from the beginning because he was interviewed. He was one of our witness interviews because... Mother Teresa had a profound impact on his life mm. and he had a very, he had a difficult childhood and he was in prison yeah. and, uh, and Mother Teresa came to his prison and gave a talk mm -hmm. and he was profoundly moved by what she said. And, and the next day he went to the chaplain of the prison and he said, hey, I want to know more about this woman. Who, who yeah. was this woman? And that started Jim on this path of, of, really a, a profound religious conversion. So now Jim has come along uh, with the Knights of Columbus as a, as a, as a, as a co um, uh, executive producer of the film. So he's, he's given us advice and he's helping to promote the film and really his, his family network is doing that as well. Oh, that's great too. Uh, they have such a far reach. It's a wonderful blessing to get this film. Speaking of which, for the many listeners and, and viewers for a program like this who say, well, you know, I kind of know about Mother Teresa, but I'd love to learn more. If the Knights have produced a beautiful film about her, where do I find it? How do I find it? Tell us where do people go to to know more specifically about No Greater Love? 
Yeah, here, here's where you go. So, so you go to the website, MotherTeresaMovie.com. Okay. And if you go to that website, MotherTeresaMovie.com, you will find information as to where the, where the movie is showing, right? It's showing on October 3rd and October 4th in 900 theaters around the country. So you'll be able to find out what theater it's showing in and how to purchase tickets. You can purchase individual tickets. You could purchase tickets for your parish or your Knights of Columbus Council. Um, so that, that's how you'd find out more about the film. And for my 102-year-old mom, Cecilia, who in the end will ask me to buy the DVD, eventually that'll be out too? It will be out eventually, yeah. And, and we'll have more information eventually. It'll, it'll, it, it'll go to DVD and it will go to streaming as well. Oh, okay. Um, All yeah. Right. So, yeah. right, so but, but you know, Monsignor, one thing I want to say is you mentioned this earlier, and I think it's it's very important point for younger people in particular, mm -hmm. uh, 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 upper grade school, seventh, eighth grade and in high school. Yes. It's so important to see this film because they, they have no memory right. of Mother Teresa. And in fact, if you're under 35 years old, you really have no living memory of Mother Teresa. And, and that's the other thing that this film does is it introduces her to a whole new generation. Mm. Uh, and that's, that, that's a, I think that's really one of the reasons why the Knights of Columbus did this because she had a profound influence on, on you and on me, but yeah. there's a whole new generation coming up. No doubt about it. And can you speak about the relationship, which I know the film touches on between uh, uh, John Paul the Great and, and Mother Teresa, this little Albanian woman and the, uh, the Polish Pope. Tell us about their relationship. You know, uh, it was a really interesting relationship because here you had, they had a beautiful friendship. And mm -hmm. I think that friendship came from just, they, they were two souls committed to, to serving their fellow man, right? And, and so Mother Teresa called, the day John Paul II went to Calcutta and visited her home for the dying in Calcutta. She said that was the happiest moment of her life. <laughs> and so they had this beautiful friendship um, on a lot of different levels. Uh, and one thing, one biographer of John Paul II said when he interviewed uh, John Paul II about his meetings with Mother Teresa, John Paul said, there were often, we didn't use a lot of words. We just, we, mm -hmm. we just enjoyed being in one another's presence. So they were two really luminous souls, I would say, uh, who appreciated one another a tremendous amount. Another uh, person that was a friend of hers, who was a friend of mine, was good Cardinal John O'Connor of New York. And he used to say, um, I haven't got in my, my finger, uh, my whole body, the power that that woman has in her finger, that, that there's a moral presence that she has that can transform the world and and I think uh, we, we all admire it and I hope the film will convince people that uh, you don't have to be the most physically powerful person in the world to transform the world as she did. Now I want to talk about another great woman. I, every weekend I get to celebrate weddings and when I do I, I don't want to give some canned talk on love and marriage. I want to talk about what they most love in each other, the couple sitting in front of me. And I'm wondering when you chose to build a life with Vanessa, what did she have that made you say God, there's a million people out there I could marry, but this is the one I think you have meant for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, a great question. I, and and I, I hope Vanessa will be listening. It's it's <laughs> it was you know what it was. It was initially her cheerfulness. I mean, she was okay. she's a very cheerful, happy person. I say that she smiles with her eyes. So mm. like her eyes sort of light up when she smiles. And as I got to know her, I just saw a very a very deep faith in Vanessa and. Uh, She's the first woman that I thought, I, I want to marry this woman. I want to marry this woman. And so, um, yeah, so we, you know, we've married and we've had three, three beautiful daughters. And uh, um, yeah, and, and now she's, you know, obviously as Supreme Knight, I mean, my life is pretty busy and I travel a lot. And she's been very patient and persevering uh, in, in all of that. Now, if I had Vanessa here and I said, why Patrick Kelly? What would she say? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, some other time I will ask her, God willing. But let, let me ask you this, too, because uh, when people, especially funerals, uh, people say, I wonder if my mother, my father had a life of meaning. And I, I often think that if the big three are covered, they have found their meaning. And the big three being, do they love their God? Do they love their family? Do they love their country? You have loved and served those three forces in your life so thoroughly and completely. 
Did that come to you naturally that you knew that to have a meaningful life, I've got to do for my country, I've got to do for my family, I've got to do for my God, because that's what you do. Yeah. I think for me, uh, and I'm a little embarrassed to talk about myself, but I think it did come naturally. I, I didn't, mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah, I just, you know, faith was always a part of, of who I was growing yeah. up. And uh, now, obviously, I, mat- I matured more into it. Uh, mm-hmm. But even as a young man, um, you know, I, I, I had a desire to serve in the military. And I couldn't quite describe it. It was just something I wanted to do. I felt like I needed to do it. Mm. Um, and so I, you know, I, I pursued that and I, I took, I, you know, I took r- risks to do these things. You know, I, 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 there was no, there was no clear path for me. You know, the Lord didn't sort of open up and say, you're, you, I want you to do A, B, and C. I just sort of, I just sort of followed the Lord's will at each turn Praying, some, sometimes in doubt and confusion, but praying and, and mm-hmm. uh, just moving along. And But then you sort of look back over the years and you see what the Lord has done in your life. And it's, it, it's beautiful. Yeah. I, I love our church. I know you do too. But I'm not going to uh, kid any of us by saying that we always get our message effectively out there. And I mention that because uh, Supreme Knight Kelly is, as people now realize by listening to this, you're, you're wonderfully articulate. And at the same time, you come across as wonderfully human. As a great communicator, do you have any idea what we as a church can do better to take this incredible gift of faith and the message of the faith and get it to a, a wider audience? And, and frankly, to bring back lots of people who may have drifted away from their Catholicism, I'm certainly hoping this, this film, No Greater Love About Mother Teresa, will be one of the instruments to do that. But what else can we do to take this great gift we have and, and use it to, to bring people home to Christ? You know, uh, that's another great question, Monsignor. I I think a lot of, so much of it is friendship, right? So Mm -hmm. so much of it is just authentic friendship. And and I think of the really effective people in my life who do this. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I I, I have a lot of priest friends who are very, very effective. And they know their faith. They live it. They're authentic witnesses. But they're also they're also just very kind, friendly people, right? And they're mm-hmm. steady, and uh, so I, I really I just think the importance of 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 those friendships, and that's one of the things we try to do in the Knights of Columbus is is you know fraternity is one of our principles. So right. we have our three principles are charity, unity, unity mm-hmm. is critical, and fraternity. And when I say fraternity, I really mean friendship, bringing people together in friendship. I think that is so important. And in a way, I mean, that's what, that's what, that's what Christ did. I mean, Christ brought men together in love and in friendship. And I, I, there's, that's the way, I think. I promise this will be my, my closing question, but I guess the first guest many, many years ago that I had the chance to interview was the film director, Frank Capra of It's a Wonderful Life and so many other great films. But he said he thought one of the great uh, burdens to humanity was not so much physical illness, but, uh, but spiritual illness, and particularly, he said, uh, discouragement. I, I, mm. I mention that as a background because you have an amazing position and an amazing job and a great challenge uh, laying in front of you. Is Patrick Kelly the man, not just the Supreme Knight, but the man? Are you given naturally to, uh, to being someone who sees the glass as half full, to being like Vanessa, someone who brings good cheer to every situation, to be someone who is uh, hopeful and not given, in light of the state of the world and sometimes the church, not given to discouragement? What about yeah. yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we all have moments of discouragement, mm-hmm. uh, but I think the key thing, uh, I would say for me personally, is it doesn't last too long. Mm. I, I think I think through prayer, I think I, I can I, 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 I write the ship. And, and I think it's very important as a leader uh, to, to have courage, right, to have courage to, to persevere through the through the difficult times, but also to encourage, right, to encourage mm-hmm. others and uh, w- which literally means to give courage to others. Um, so I think that for, for me, I think that's really, really important. And it's also important just to have trusted people you can talk with, whether it's a spiritual director, you know, yeah. a, a yeah. good friend, your spouse. I mean, that's that's really important as a leader, I think, to keep your to yeah. keep your head on straight. Um, and so uh, so obviously discouragement comes. Mm-hmm. But for me personally, it doesn't last too long. You know, when we're in a professional religious role and in many ways, that's you, too. 
it can be so easy to be doing important things for the whole world that we forget about making time just to be in the presence of God. Do you, with all the demands of this amazing job, do you get a chance just to relax and pray? I do. I do. In fact, I would say it's essential for me. So, mm-hmm. so I, I wake up at about a little bit after five every morning because and I don't set an alarm. I just, I just wake up. I, I can't <laughs> sleep pretty much beyond that. And, th- and for me, that's the time when I pray. So I, uh, yeah, I get a cup of coffee. I have a little room. That's a, I call it a prayer room. And, uh, and that's before, it's before my children are awake uh, and it's before my wife is awake. So that is really the time when the house is the quietest. And for me, I find that's just, a, that's just essential because that, then the day starts on a great note and and the day starts in an, in an encouraging way too. Uh, uh, it's, it's just, for me, it's, it's, it's essential that I do that. I want to thank Supreme Knight, Supreme Knight Patrick E. Kelly for being with us and personally speaking. And I want to thank him for being the force behind this great new film about Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta. Um, I just think it's going to help so many people, especially young people, to see a dimension of life, to see a a way life has been lived by her and her community that truly is transforming the world. And that's because of what you're allowing people to know and to see. I also, I'm telling you something you probably know. You're highly articulate and you're highly intelligent, but you also come across as a a wonderfully normal guy. And I'm just so grateful to you for sharing your normalcy, your family life, your prayer life, your spiritual journey uh, with us on Personally Speaking. Uh, uh, Supreme Knight, you're the best. Thank you so much. Well, thanks, my senior. It was really, it was great to talk with you. This is a, this is a fun interview. <laughs> yeah, you made it fun. Thanks again for everything. And, and I'll get everybody in my parish to see the Mother Teresa movie, I promise. Please. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> As we end today's program, I want to thank you all for being with us. If you need to reach me, you can write me at personallyspeakingpodcast at gmail.com. You can also go to this show or past episodes by going on YouTube and searching under Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jimosanti, where you'll be able to watch shows as well. And please don't forget to click like and subscribe. Personally Speaking is also on Facebook at Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jimosanti. We're also now on Instagram at Personally Speaking Podcast. Please share and let others know about Personally Speaking. I'm privileged to serve as host and executive producer, personally speaking. Our producer is Lisa Jandovitz. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be with you again next time on Personally Speaking.